our sample space or each individual outcome, those things are kind of synonymous. The collection of simple events is the sample space. How many ways can this happen? Is there more than one way you can get one head and two tails? How many ways? Six. Six ways? One head, two tails? Does this have one head and two tails? Does this have one head and two tails? No. How about this one? One head, two tails. How about this one? Yeah. That's one of them. Put a little star there. This one? This one? Yeah. One head, two tails. This one? This one? No, it has two heads and one tail. So here's the difference between an event and a simple event. An event says, overall, what are you looking to have happen? Well, you're looking for a head and two tails. Simple events are the way that you can accomplish that event. Are you seeing the difference? The event is what you're looking for. Simple events are ways you could accomplish that or not accomplish that. They're all the specific outcomes. So how many ways can we accomplish our event? There's three ways. Three simple events will accomplish our main event. Does that make sense to you? So I, it's a little little tricked up. Do you guys have any questions? Oh, well, it's a little tricky sometimes if you really don't get the, the whole concept. So are there any questions on what we, we just talked about? Procedure, that's kind of basic. That's just what you're doing. Events are what you're looking for. Simple events are how you accomplish your events. They're individual outcomes. Some of them are going to accomplish your events. Some of them, obviously, are not going to accomplish your events. Let's try one more. I want you to do it. Um, Give me another event that I could have with flipping a coin three times. What's another event? What could happen? Three Can days. anything else happen besides one head and two tails? Yeah, one okay, tail give me one. Head. What now? One tail and two tails. One tail, yeah, okay, that works. One tail, two heads. Okay. Is there any other events that I could have? What's that? Three heads. How many tails? Well, not because they're all three heads. And the last one we could have is what? So these are all examples of events. We have here's an event, here's another event. These are the last two events. There's really nothing else that could happen, right? Notice how many individual outcomes we have. So there's more individual outcomes than we have total events because some of these overlap. This right here that I starred, that's three ways to accomplish this one event. How many ways can you accomplish this event? Can you see it? How many ways? Where are we finding that out? Look over there. How many, how many times do you get one tail and two heads? Here's one tail and two heads. That's one. Here's one head, tail and two heads. There's another one. That's one, two, three squiggly things. Looks kind of like these. So the three squiggly things that accomplishes this event, three single outcomes, three simple events, would accomplish this event. True? Okay. How many ways can you accomplish this event? There's only one. Boxy thing. Boxy thing does this one, and circle thing does that one. <laughs> I'm joking around, but I mean, this, this is the relationship between simple events and events. Events are the overall thing you're looking for, okay? That's it. Simple events are the individual outcomes that you could get from your procedure. Some of those simple events are going to satisfy your event. Maybe only one. Maybe up to three. Maybe more than that. If we were flipping a coin four times, you could have lots of outcomes that, that satisfy your event. Do you understand the relationship between procedures, events, and simple events, and the sample space? The sample space is not a problem. You just collect all the individual simple outcomes, and that's it. Or simple events, and that's it. So, now that we understand that, we can really use those words to kind of describe some probability. So let's do that right now. When we say probability in this class, say probability,
we're talking about the likelihood of an event occurring. The likelihood of an event occurring. Notice I'm not saying the likelihood of a simple event, although sometimes those might be one and the same. If there's only one possible outcome that satisfies your event, then the probability is one and the same. But when we talk about probability, we're saying the probability that your event happens. Or the likelihood. The likelihood of an event occurring. We're going to use, what letter do you think we're going to use for probability? Geniuses, every one of you. What if it was like R? Wouldn't you be confused? <laughs> yeah, no, P, you're exactly right. So probability is P. Events are usually listed with capital letters. So if we're talking about event A, we're just going to say A. So A could be uh, flipping a coin three times, event whatever you're talking about. So we, we can list it. You can even list it in words. You don't have to use the letters. But if we're talking about an event, so for instance, event A, or you could write flipping a coin three times, or anything like this, B, C, etc. If we're talking about the probability of an event occurring, the way we write that is we say probability of a. That doesn't mean multiplication. It's not like algebra. It says probability of A. It's more like a function notation if you want to consider it as something. You're finding the probability of this event happening, basically. And so this means the probability of event A actually occurring. We actually have three types of probability we deal with. And you deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, really, you do when you think about it. Um, you'll, you'll probably notice this when I'm going through it. But there are three types of probability. The first type of probability is what you get when you actually perform an experiment. Um, it's called observed probability. So observed probability happens when like, you took your coin and you flipped it 100 times, and you calculated how many heads you got, and you calculated how many tails you got, and from there you can actually mathematically figure out what's the probability of getting a head. Because maybe your coin's weighing a little funny. Do you see the, the picture in there? That's observed probability, when you actually do something and you get a probability from that observation. You follow? So observed probability, it's probability that is estimated based on your observation. Probability that is estimated. Estimated? Wait a second. Why estimated? Why isn't it exact? Well, can you ever do a procedure for so long that, you, that you've accomplished all... Let's see, let me, let me rephrase it a different way. That doesn't, make, doesn't flow right. Can you ever perform a procedure so many times that you've exhausted all the possible times you could do it? For instance, could you flip a coin until you can stop flipping a coin anymore? Can you do that forever? So can you calculate the probability if you can't do it forever exactly? And the answer is no. You can't flip a coin enough for you to have an exact probability. All you can do is say, maybe I flip it 100,000 times. Is that enough to get the probability of flipping a coin? 
The answer is pretty close, but no, not exactly. I mean, you're not going to get a, the exact probability of flipping a coin by doing observations. One, the, that's why it's called observed, and it's estimated. You observe it for a certain number that you decide on. Say, I want to flip a coin 100 times, and after that, I'm going to calculate the probability to be estimated. It's not going to be exact because I can't flip that coin forever. I don't want to. I should flip it a certain number of times to make sure that I have at least a good sample of uh, outcomes there. Does that make sense to you? So we can't do it forever. That's why it's estimated. And fortunately, it's not too hard to figure out. If we want to find the probability of A here, all we do is we take the number of times A occurred divided by the number of times you perform that procedure. So number of times A occurred, remember A is your event, Number of times A occurred, you just divide it by the number of times your procedure was repeated. So the number of times you did that thing. I'm going to give you all three of these, and then we're going to, I'll give you some examples so we can calculate these things uh, independently and figure out what they are. So first one observed, it's you're actually doing something. You're actually going out there and flipping the coin, or going out there and taking a poll, or going out there and observing what someone's doing, and that's, you're basing your probability off of that. Okay, a perfect example for this, if you really want one right now, so you're not really quite clear, is, um, you, do you watch baseball? Do you know what baseball is? <laughs> okay, good. So, you know these guys up there with the sticks, they swing, right? And they, they hit this little white thing coming to them. Uh, and sometimes it hits them and they get mad. They go out and tussle. <laughs> tussle, I haven't heard that word in a while, but they tussle a little bit. So. Baseball is all about statistics, right? I mean, you hear statistics on baseball players all the time. If you're into sports or you watch Sports Center for like five minutes, they're always talking about baseball. I, I personally, I don't like baseball, uh, but if you play it, whatever, that's cool. Uh, so, but they're always talking about the statistics. And so, if someone has a batting average of uh, 100, would you expect them to go up there and hit the ball? Do you think a batting average of 100 means? Um, one out of every ten, 10 times they're going to hit the ball. Is that good? Is that bad? A batting average of 400 is excellent. Okay? A batting average of 100 really sucks. It's horrible. They're not going to hit the ball. But that, that right there, with their getting that batting average of 400 or 450 or 333, any of those, those decimals that you see on the back of the baseball court, if they're talking about that, that is an observed thing, right? What they did is they said, oh, how many times have you hit the ball? Eight times. How many times were you up to?